Hi there and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. Previously in this series I showed you how to create a boat wake using BOSS. In this video I'll add dynamic foam particles to it. As usual I'd like to give a quick shout out to Diego Trazzi on whose work these tutorials are based. So what I have right now might be good enough for a long shot or lower fidelity project but it would certainly have trouble standing up to a close-up. That's because we're still using a single mesh to represent our ocean. In real life, water has foam that breaks away from the surface and reacts dynamically. If we want to make a truly convincing ocean surface, we'll need to recreate that using Bifrost. I'm going to start with the file we created in the previous movie, but with a few small alterations. First, I'm going to hide my result plane and reshow the boss output, since I'll need that to help drive the particles. Next, I'm going to hide my wave solver and bring back my spectral waves. These are going to guide the initial velocity of the particles. However, since I'm just using this as an influence now and not for rendering, I don't need to worry so much about the fidelity of the ocean plane itself. So I'm going to reduce its subdivisions to speed up performance. Now I'm ready for particles. In the Bifrost Fluids menu, I'm going to create a new liquid solver. Since I didn't have anything selected, it just creates the initial solver and properties nodes. However, if I play the scene, no particles are generated yet, because I haven't specified anything to emit them. So what should I use as an emitter? The obvious answer is the ocean plane itself, since it actually represents water. But the entire plane is kind of big, and I only want foam particles around my boat, so that would be kind of wasteful. Alternatively, if I use the boat itself as an emitter, that would get the particles to stay nearby. So I'll select my boat, control select the Bifrost liquid container, and go to Bifrost Fluids, Emission Region. However, even if I were to play back now, it still wouldn't be quite enough, so I'm going to adjust a few settings. Starting with the Bifrost liquid properties, I'm going to change the master voxel size to 0.1. Think of this as your simulation's overall resolution. Particles are generated in 3D pixels called voxels. The smaller the voxel, the more of them you can fit in a small space. For even better results, you can make this value smaller, but at the cost of performance. Next, in the emission region properties, I need to increase the thickness of the region, since I want to generate the particles just outside the boat's hull. And lastly, I'll need a guide. This is a mesh that will guide the forces applied to my particles. That's where our boss ocean comes into play. So I'll select them both, then go to Bifrost Fluids, Guide. Now if I rewind to frame 1, I finally get particles. To get a better look at my simulation, as well as speed up things in the viewport, I'm going to hide my ocean. Looking at this now, I can see the wake is being generated only in the area of the boat, just like I wanted. However, look at all this water being generated inside the boat as well. That's just wasted horsepower. To fix that, I'm going to select the boat, as well as the Bifrost liquid node, and then add the boat as a collider. This works because we expanded the emission region earlier so that it's larger than the boat, similar to what we did in the previous movie with the ripple generator. I just need to shrink the collision region a bit. There, now I'm generating particles just outside the boat's hull. If you want an even bigger wake, feel free to expand the emission region even further, but I'm going to leave it as is for performance sake. Let's try a quick render. That's not too bad for a first try, but it's also not really what I want. Rather than this transparent liquid, what I'm really after is frothy white foam. So to get that, I'll select the liquid and go to Bifrost Fluids, Foam. Then rewind and have a look again.
So you can see here a second box representing my new foam region. However, I'm getting disappointingly few white particles. Let's tweak some settings in the foam properties to fix that. First off, a thousand particles isn't nearly enough. I'm going to need at least 10 times that. Next, I'm going to reduce the min liquid speed, churn, and curvature. These all determine the forces necessary to generate foam, so by lowering them I'm making it easier to create. And since the foam is all I'm really interested in, I'm actually going to delete the liquid. It'd look weird to have those particles overlap with my ocean shader anyway. Now I'm getting a lot more foam. Notice that despite our relatively gentle boss guide, our boat looks like it's in the middle of a storm. Part of the problem is that our guide accuracy is not very high, so the power transfer from ocean to particles isn't right. I can improve this in the guide properties container by reducing the guide voxel scale. This allows more foam to fit in a smaller space, much like the master voxel size. Additionally, I'm going to reduce the guide mesh properties velocity scale to 75% to dampen some of Boss's influence on the particles. Of course, you can tweak this value depending on how dramatic an effect you want. Yeah, that's a bit more muted. Now it's time for another test render. Well, that's not good. I can sort of see my phone, but it's showing up black. It looks like it's not reflecting light properly, so let me check the Arnold settings. Here's the problem. Ray depth volume is set to zero, but we need a value here because foam uses a volume shader. So I'll set it to four. That's a bit better, but it needs more. There are two roads I can take now. The easiest is to modify the foam's volume shader. The idea is to emit a small amount of light based on density, so that when the particles bunch up, they glow white. This technique is a bit of a cheat physically, but still very convincing. Alternatively, if you're an experienced compositor, you could also render out the boat, foam, and ocean onto different layers. In that case, I'd recommend not emitting light from the foam, but rather adjusting the exposure of the sky dome to more naturally light it. This will overexpose the HDR background though, so you want to reduce camera visibility to hide it. This method will give you a lot more control over the precise lighting of the foam without having to worry about how the changed lighting might affect the boat or ocean. Then you can just merge the layers together with a compositing software like Flame. No matter which road you take though, there's little argument that the result stands up better than our boss-only solution. And with that, we've covered the most common ocean effects. So in the next couple of videos, I'll focus more on neat tricks you can use to achieve more specialized effects.